All right, so you're trying to gain more mass, you're trying to bulk up, you're trying to put on more weight, and you're just tired of eating. You eat and you eat and you feel sick and you don't feel hungry. How do you kind of get around that and, and eat the amount of food you need without feeling sick? We are diving into that in today's episode. So strap in, get ready for episode 166. Let's go. The future of fitness. How do you gain muscle mass? Fitness is not complicated. It's simple when you break it down. There's so much information out there. No fads, no diets, just plain simple habits. You're listening to the Bones to Bulk podcast. Hey, welcome to today's episode. My name is Brian Parody, and if this is your first time listening, welcome to the show. So glad to have you here. For my return listeners, thank you so much for coming back. It means the world to me that you continue to tune in week to week, and I am just so appreciative of that. This would not be possible without you. All right, if you are not following my YouTube channel, please head on over to youtube.com slash bones to bulk. I have full workouts on there with dumbbells only, body weight only, full gym, like you name it. I have tons of stuff on there, over 300 videos on YouTube, so go check check that out, youtube.com slash bones to bulk. Be sure to hit that subscribe button when you get there. All right, with that being said, let's dive in. So when you're trying to go from skinny to buff, it can be hard because you feel like you never stop eating. And I get that. I, I get that it's tough. I've been there to where I feel like almost throwing up all the time because I'm eating so much. And early on in the journey, you know, I didn't eat necessarily all the right foods, all the best foods. And so in order to get the calories in, I was eating a lot of stuff that just wasn't good for me. I didn't understand the nutrition the way I do now. And while I was still getting in the calories I needed, they weren't coming from the best sources. So that aided in me feeling sick. And then also I wasn't really focusing in on calorie dense foods to where I could eat not a ton and still get a lot of calories in. And slowly, you know, I've learned over the years how to do that. And now I love what I eat. I don't dread meals. I don't just dislike eating. Like I love my meals and I love what I eat. And you can get to that point. And so today I kind of want to break down, you know, if you're trying to get in more calories, kind of some easy ways to do that without just stuffing your face all the time with pounds of chicken and pounds of broccoli and pounds of rice, because trust me, that crap gets old. So first off, you know, you've got to figure out how many calories you need to consume in order to gain. And if you are, are unsure of this, go to Google, type in calorie calculator for weight gain. You'll plug in your stuff and it'll tell you approximately how much you should eat. Now, is this 100% accurate? No, it is not, but it gives you a good baseline and then you can follow it from week to week after a couple weeks. If you find you're not gaining, then increase it a little bit more, but it gives you a good baseline of where to kind of start trying. Now, you need to have your three solid meals a day, okay, obviously, and you need to make those calorie dense. <laughs> All right, so let's divide your plate up into thirds for each meal. The, the largest section of the plate, almost half, should be like a fibrous veggie. And it can be anything. There's no bad vegetable. So whether it's broccoli or carrots or zucchini and squash, like you name it, fill up half your plate with veggies. All right, and I know they're not high in, in calories, just bear with me. Next is going to be, the next third is going to be protein, and that should take up a little bit larger of the remaining half. So you have half a plate and veggies and a little more than half of what's remaining of your protein. And again, this can be a lean protein, chicken, fish, turkey, a very lean cut of beef is okay once in a while. I would only do that a couple times a week though. Keep it to your lighter meats. Then you're going to pick a carb. And I like to pick calorie dense carbs. So something like rice or quinoa or pasta are usually my three go-tos. Also potatoes. I love red potatoes. Sweet potatoes obviously are ideal. Personally, I just, I'm not a big fan of sweet potatoes. So if you love sweet potatoes, that's awesome. Eat those. For me, I'm not a big fan. I go with red potatoes. I love them. And that should be kind of the basis of your dinners uh, and even your lunches. Like for lunch, I usually do fish and pasta. Now, breakfasts are a little different. I mean, depending on your schedule, I know some of us are out the door quick. One thing I really like to do is the Kodiak waffles. They're like vanilla and buttermilk. And then I put PB powder on top of them. So it's very calorie dense. It's not super, super feeling. So I don't feel like I'm stuffing my face. And then I have a glass of nonfat milk to go along with it. So, so really easy and calorie dense breakfast. Now in between the meals is where it really counts because it can be easy to set up our meals, but what do we do in between our meals to make sure we're getting enough calories? Well, you've got to be eating snacks in between all your meals, in between breakfast and lunch, between lunch and dinner and after dinner. And some things that are really helpful for calorie density is tree nuts, super high in calories, so you don't need to eat a lot of them. 
maybe like a quarter to a half a cup, and you've already packed in a lot of calories. A half a cup of almonds is almost 400 calories, so that adds up pretty quick. You can do things like yogurt with protein powder mixed in. You can do protein shakes, and that leads me to another thing. If you're doing meals, if you're doing snacks, and you're still not hitting what you need to with your calories, do smoothies. So after dinner, you know, as your bedtime snack, do a smoothie. And this can consist of milk, non-fat yogurt, a banana, a scoop of protein powder, and some PB powder. And it's going to be pretty calorie dense. And drinking your calories is so much easier. And drinking your calories is so much easier than eating your calories. Like even when you don't feel like eating a meal, you usually can just down a smoothie pretty quickly without a second thought. So smoothies are a great way to get in extra calories. You can throw one in, you know, early in the morning before breakfast, you can throw one in at night and really bump up your calories. And if you want to make them more dense, just increase the amount of the ingredients you put in it. And it can act as not only a meal replacement, but some extra calories in addition to meal replacement. So you have a lot of options you can do. Don't get narrowed down with, I have to eat chicken and broccoli and rice three times a day. You don't, you don't. And what you're going to find is as you consume more calories that are like this, you're going to feel better. You're not going to feel like throwing up all the time because you're getting a good variety. You're getting good healthy foods. And it's not just crap that you're like doing a dirty bulk. And when I started, everybody always told me like, oh, if you're trying to bulk, don't worry about what you eat. Just eat whatever you want to eat. And I was doing that. I was doing, (laughs) you know, before I I figured out what food, what it meant to eat nutritious food, I was doing a dirty bulk. My life was a dirty bulk. I ate ice cream and pizza and hamburgers and drank tons of soda a day. And man, I would down cookies like there was no tomorrow. Like I ate like shit. I did. And I wasn't gaining weight through that. Even though I was consuming an ungodly amount of calories, I wasn't gaining anything. And as a hard gainer, you know, that's very common because the food we eat, you know, for some people eating a lot of junk food, it immediately turns to fat and leads to being overweight. But when you're a hard gainer, your body for some reason doesn't convert it to fat and it just goes right through you. And so you don't get bigger, you don't put on fat, but you also can't put on muscle. And when you make the switch to eating clean food, when I made the switch to eating clean foods, I I was amazed at how fast I began to put on muscle. It was like, it was unreal. I couldn't believe it. I was like, all this time I had been eating all this food and nothing worked. And now when I switched to healthy foods, foods that nurtured my body and gave it what it needed to fuel my muscles, to build my muscles, that's when things took off. And that's what it's all about. And whether you're trying to lose weight or gain weight, I know I'm talking all about gaining mass, but it's the same principle for losing weight. You still want to eat all this healthy, good, nutritious food. You're just going to do it at a much, much, much smaller calorie ratio. So don't get overwhelmed. Don't throw your hands up in despair and just say, ah, I'm destined to be a hard gainer forever. I'm destined to be skinny forever. No, you're not. No, you're not. You may fail forward. You may fall and have to pick yourself back up and take two steps back and then one step forward. And it's a struggle. It is until you start really figuring this stuff out. But the only way you're really going to figure it out is by doing it. You've got to start where you're at. You've got to start implementing some healthy things, getting rid of the unhealthy, and making those baby steps. That's what it's all about. Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. It's not about this jump in head first and everything's got to be perfect from the get-go. No. It's slow, steady steps that get you there. It's that consistency, that consistently eating more, consistently eating good foods. And that doesn't mean you can never have a cheat meal. It doesn't mean you can't ever go, you know, one day off. I'll be honest, I had a terrible cheat meal yesterday, like, and... Honestly, it was probably a little more than I should have, but it happens. But you know what? I'm back on track today, and I will be for the rest of the week. And what you have to realize is it's okay once in a while, but you can't make it a habit. Your consistency has to be good habits, and then your one-off can be a cheat meal or something bad. So focus on the goal. Focus on doing what you can do today. Make those small steps, and it'll get easier and easier and easier. All right, if you are not part of our text community, please text the word podcast to 706-222-7551. You will be joined to our text community. I send out a few texts a week. You can actually ask me questions at this number. I respond to all the texts a couple times a week, so if you don't get immediate response, don't worry. I will respond, Uh, and it's just a great way for me to stay in touch with you you. So if you're not a part of that, again, text podcast to 706-222-7551. All right, remember, no matter what walls you're facing, what things seem impossible to overcome, you can accomplish whatever you set your mind to. You've got this.